breaking the wall of clashing cultures. How sociology can mediate between Islam and Western modernity. Nilufek Gölle, École des Hautes Études en Sciences Sociales, Paris. On the 9th of November 1989, I was in Istanbul and watched the event on television with my husband. We shared a thought for the persons who died in attempting to cross the wall. There are moments of history that we recall. We know that there is an after, before and after, as we recall very well the fall of Berlin Wall today. Because we had the feeling that this, the fall of Berlin Wall meant a uh, closing the past, communist past in Europe. But there are sometimes dates that are very important as well, but we do not recall. We put into archives, we have not realized maybe that it is very important as well. The destruction of Mostar Bridge, it is the same date, 9th of November, but four years later, in 1993, in the midst of Europe, Mittel Europa, when after the fall of Berlin War, Yugoslavia, also was shattered and we had the civil war, Muslims and Croats being killed, ethnic cleansing, and the Mostar Bridge was destroyed. The bridge that brought people together, mosques and markets linking together. We rebuilt the bridge and we put it in the archives in a way. Do you remember it? Does it make part of our European memory? why it is not the symbol of Europe and why it is the wall which became the symbol. We can ask these questions. We rightly celebrate the fall of the Berlin Wall, but maybe we wrongly forget the destruction of the Mostar Bridge because it opened up a new cleavage, a new problem, Muslim presence in the heart of Europe itself. A new cleavage. And when I moved from Istanbul to Paris, I myself haven't expected that Islam was going to be a very decisive issue for shaping the future of Europe. I myself very much as majority of the intellectuals of my generation, believing in the European ideal, I will consider it as Europhile rather than being Eurosceptic even today, we haven't expected this turn. And then comes after Bosnian Muslims who discovered themselves being distanced from Europe as if both being Bosnian and as a European Muslim created a kind of tension, not a hyphenated identity. Comes the Turkish membership, which became a major societal debate in many of the European countries. And then comes terrorist movements, homegrown terrorist movements, jihadists, even those among convert Muslims from European countries joining jihadism, and today what we call refugee crisis. But mostly I think what we forget is the debates that shaped European countries since the last 20, 30 years on the Islamic presence living in European countries, ordinary Muslims who are becoming more and more visible in our public lives and creating some kind of clashes, cultural divide, controversies around their religious rituals like covering, praying in public, building mosques, dietary habits, halal food, circumcision debate in Germany, or asking for burial in the European countries rather than going back to their own countries, which shows that we already are in a stage of integration, that they want to live as citizens, as ordinary citizens, but not that ordinary, because they make their faith and religious signs visible, and which disturbs the norms of the European societies, which creates a kind of dissensus, which creates a divide. I wanted to understand why in the ordinary everyday life, how Muslims became closer to Europe, this is the image, 
if you remember from the Orientalist painting, from the exotic other, now Muslim is the familiar, but still stranger. She's vertical. <laughs> She's in the, under public gaze, not in the harem. She went outside. This is the German well-known artist who tries to understand, give a meaning to this Muslim woman. Although at first sight, this can be taken as a very provocative take because he plays with covering and nakedness. We can develop different meanings of that and it calls Turkish delight in Vienna. Some of the inhabitants felt, of course, Turkish and Muslim and women offended by this. But at the same time, this is a depiction of the new situation. What is not acknowledged maybe in these debates on headscarf and gender equality, because we put these two things as opposites. If you put the headscarf on, then therefore you are not in, you are not for gender equality. So these are against European values. This was almost in every European country, this was the take. Of course, everyone will think first about the headscarf issue, La Faire du Foulard in France, but it, didn't, it wasn't limited to France. That is my argument. All these controversies were as a light motive, circulating from one country to another, and in a kind of converging way, secular values versus, therefore, the uh, Islamic uh, values and Islamic way of life. But what we have forgotten in the debate, what is not acknowledged, what is the blind spot, is that these women are already crossing the boundaries, country-wise, but also not in the harem, but in the public life, in the schools, girls in the schools, women as teachers, aspiring to be professionals, engineers, scientists, politicians. So this was the blind spot. So the meaning of the headscarf was changing in a way. Another very important issue which also traveled from one country to another, praying in public. This visibility of Islam in the European public sphere. Nearby, in front of the cathedral. That shows also that Muslims are relating, connecting with other religions. It's not only the secular environment, but also have to accommodate with other religions, Catholicism here, but also in different places with Judaism, Christianity, but among Muslims themselves, they have to be much more open to other confessions and different ethnicities, share spaces with Pakistanis and Turks and uh, coming from Moroccans. So there's a kind of even more cosmopolitan Islam in Europe. In Europe, Muslim people and Islam are acquiring particular particularities, singularities that we cannot see in Muslim majority countries. Through this controversy, Catholics have said they offended our feelings. But for Muslims, it's also an accommodation with the Catholic religion. What again is forgotten? the blind spot, what is not acknowledged in this debate is maybe the three monotheisms in Europe today. How we are going to think about, articulate among these three monotheisms. Does Islam have an equal space or Europe is going to have a Judeo-Christian identity? We can answer to these issues, public visibility of Islam, which becomes a source of controversy in different ways. How to deal with it? One is this one, this way of dealing with it. You might all remember this was in Switzerland, although not a European Union country. It made part of the European debates with this controversy, with the referendum against the Minares. And this poster is very telling about the representation the Minares is missiles invading the country and the women, covered women, with no face. This is very dehumanizing, of course, but a very strong. And what is more interesting, this poster has been taken in almost every European country by the neo-populist parties 
and used, readapted according to the map, and used in every other country. So this is one of the answers of European democracy. The way we deal with Islam in Europe will also determine the European democracy. And I think this shows how, if we do not deal well, this is a way, this is the neo-populist parties are becoming popular everywhere. And this shows very well. This is one of the ways to deal with it. To deal saying, entre interdit, forbidden entry, putting a wall. Another way to deal with, instead of putting a wall, say, okay, we start the process interactive because building a mosque is much more difficult. You have to involve so many people than saying it is forbidden. Because it is interactive, you have to find out which kind of aesthetics, should it be the same as in Moroccan mosque or Turkish mosque or something more like European mosque, what kind of aesthetics we have to create. And Cologne mosque is a kind of answer that shows how we can go beyond the cultural cleavage, cultural clash by means of cultural creativity because form matters. And this mosque has been built by a German architect, Paul Baum, who chose this interactive, intercultural borrowing. So we see that this is a from Gilbert and George, two British gentlemen living in London, artists, with this collage. They give us an idea of their changing lives in London, east, at, east end of London. You see the collage that is juxtaposition of differences. If we just juxtapose the differences, collage, we cannot find a way to go beyond. The, the invisible cultural walls are there. How we go beyond it. Collage is also something like multiculturalism. We have been debating multiculturalism and the end of multiculturalism almost in every society. All the politicians have declared that. So this collage doesn't help and they would say this is explosive. This would lead to violence. So one way to go beyond, how we go beyond that cultural cleavage, this is the issue. How we can recreate a public culture which can go, which can be which can help to find a new bond, intersubjective among Muslims and non-Muslims. And I think one thing important is culture. Culture should be the mediator. I give example. One example is the museum, Jewish museum in Berlin, a year ago made an exhibition on circumcision. After the controversy on circumcision, Muslim circumcision, Jewish population entered into the controversy and the museum made this exhibition and brought in, therefore, different citizens together. This is one very strong example how artists can contribute to going beyond the cultural cleavages, turning clashes to cultural creativity. One last example after Charlie Hebdo, because we need citizens, we need researchers, we need artists, and we need citizens. After Charlie Hebdo attacks, in Oslo, Muslims formed a human shield around the synagogue in Oslo, meaning that they have confirmed their co-citizenship with Jews. All these examples of performative citizenship, cultural creativity, and intellectuals as translators among cultures will be the new vision for Europe, creating its public culture, which has been the most important heritage for us. The difference, singularity of Europe, it wasn't the freedom of expression, it is what Europeans have done with freedom of expression, innovation and creativity. Thank you.